Hi everyone, my name is Peter Pakulski. Today we will continue building financial model for a customer behavior business idea. So for example, you have some project where different types of customers uh, have different uh, behavior in uh, from perspective of revenues, direct costs, they may have some different uh, life cycles. So some part of your customers will stay with you for a year, some uh, part of your customers will stay with you for three months or for example, some types of customers may uh, have just one purchase of your product or your service and then quit. And there are a lot of types of businesses like this. So for these businesses, we are building this type of model. Uh, I'm doing it from scratch. So please guys, uh, like, share, subscribe. You can always order financial models from scratch for your unique business ideas. We can help you with that. At the end screen of this video, I will be giving you the link to the playlist where I will be keeping all these tutorials from, um, from the first one, uh, from the empty Microsoft Excel tab uh, till the final overview. So you will be able to watch all the process for free and when i completely finish this model i will give you all the links in the description of this video uh, as well so you will be able to uh, watch choose the um, different choose the, your specific tutorial and watch it from the beginning till the end so during our previous uh, tutorial we were focusing we were modeling direct costs that were linked to the existing customers um, and today we will be focused on the direct costs that are linked to the only to the new customers so i will be modeling these types of costs today so first of all let's very quickly run through um, tutorials uh, that we did before um, so first of all, we have a unique rule uh, in our model that all inputs are colored with specific blue color like this. So these are the inputs, these are the inputs, these are the inputs, these are the inputs. So all these blue cells are inputs for the future scenario analysis. So we will be able to play with all these uh, numbers, percentages. Uh, we will be looking at cash flow statement, financial efficiency numbers, and we will be able to uh, find all the inputs very quickly throughout the whole financial model. So this is very important to mark all your inputs because this will ease your process with uh, scenario building, stress testing analysis. So this is vital. Uh, first of all, uh, we have uh, six types of customers we can switch them on and off from calculations we can set up the duration of the life cycle uh, for each type of customer so for example this uh, type of customer will stay with us for 24 months this one for three, uh, 34 months uh, so we can set up any duration of the life cycle this will affect the revenues profits profitability everything cash flow statement financial efficiency net present value internal rate of return everything then we we assume that we may have some uh, global and local coefficients uh, for the revenues global coefficients for example uh, we can um, we can assume that uh, we would like to increase all the um, all the revenues for example uh, on 20 percent what will happen with our cash flow or for example we can what we can do we can increase uh, the revenue for specific type of customer for example increase it on 20 percent or for example decrease the revenues for another type of customer on 20 percent so we will be able to create a huge amount of scenarios very quickly or we can uh, play with um, globally with all the revenues here so locally we're doing it here globally we're doing it using this coefficient 
The same story we are doing for direct costs, uh, global, local coefficients. The same uh, parameters we're using for the amount of new customers, global and local coefficients for the scenario play. Then we are moving to the revenues. So here from left to right, we have the uh, months of the life cycle of the customer. So we're assuming that the maximum of life cycle win will be 100 and just for example, 10 years. And inside this 10 year horizon, we can specify the revenues monthly, uh, how many dollars per month will give us each type of customer. So we can, for example, some types of customers will uh, revenue increase then decrease. Some revenues will be stable. Some of them, for example, uh, will have will start with big numbers, then they will uh, be lower and lower and lower and then transform into uh, zero. So we can create any portraits uh, of revenues for different types of customers here. Then we are doing the same exercise for direct costs. So we are describing direct costs linked to the revenues per uh, one type of customer and we can uh, use different algorithms in, of increasing and decreasing uh, for revenues separately for direct costs separately so for example the revenues per customer per month for one type of customer can rise for example so for example they may be starting revenues from small numbers and be growing direct costs for example they can start with big numbers for example and then start to decrease so we can use separate algorithms for the revenues and direct costs. Then uh, the next input uh, was um, we were setting up the amount of new customers, only new customers that are joining our project at this or that moment of, of the timeline. Uh, so this means that uh, in July 2023 we have 20 new customers, then 20 new customers. So if we are looking at the total amount of uh, customers of type one in August, there will be, for example, 40 new uh, customers. So here we're describing only the amount of new customers and the amount of existing customers will be counting, uh, will be calculated automatically depending on the life cycle uh, for this or that type of customer. So what we are fighting for, we're fighting for correct calculating of the amount of existing customers. So because this will affect the revenues, revenues will be growing um, realistically and profits will be growing realistically, realistically and uh, cash flow statement will be more accurate. A simple and discounted payback period will be uh, will be realistic. So this is, uh, these are the uh, algorithms that will improve the quality of our model. Then uh, we were calculating the revenues. Finally, we were putting the revenues inside the timeline, depending on um, types of customers. Then we were uh, calculating direct costs. Um, the first type of direct costs. Then we were calculating the uh, amount of existing customers at any given moment inside the timeline. And uh, during previous tutorial, we were uh, linking uh, the direct costs. For example, we have some direct costs that are linked to the amount of uh, existing amount of existing customers at any given moment inside the timeline and today we will be creating direct costs that are linked to the amount of only new customers so here we can just copy this uh, table so direct costs per new customer new customer that will be 
a new block of inputs So here we will be putting all our types of customers plus total of new customers. Then we are setting up the amount of dollar, dollars per month the level of expenses per one new uh, customer so these are the inputs so we're coloring these inputs with specific color which goes with all our inputs for example so these are our imaginary expenses per one new customer then uh, we are assuming that we would like to switch on and off these types of expenses from our calculations to see the cash flow statement with or without this type of expense. So what we are doing now, we're going to data validation. We are using data validation list. Then we are going up. We have a very small library where we're picking on off types. So these are the inputs as well. So we're coloring it with blue. Let's extrapolate it. Then we have to explain to Microsoft Excel that, that if it is on, then it is one and we are counting these expenses inside the cash flow statement if it is off then we are not counting so this means that we are multiplying all the expense on zero so here we will be writing a very simple formula so if this one is on here we are freezing this cell then we will place one otherwise zero if this not switch on now let's extrapolate it so if we will be switching these types of expenses for these types of customers and for totals we will see here zeros so we will be able to create new scenarios very quickly during testing and everything will be done then we will be uh, creating local coefficients for these expenses if we would like to increase or decrease these expenses on some percentage uh, so this will be very useful so these are the inputs so this cell becomes an input so we are color it with blue. This will be percentage format. And then we are adding global coefficient. And the final value for this expense per one new customer will be this value. Then we multiply it on this uh, global on-off. Then we are multiplying to the local on-off coefficient. Then we are multiplying to the global coefficient for all these expenses. Here we are freezing this cell completely and then we are adding a global on off coefficient if we would like to switch on or switch off this or that type of customer completely from calculations
so here we will not be using uh, the last coefficient then we are copying this table let's change the color and we will be taking uh, this value and we will be linking this value to the amount of new customers let's go up so these are new customers so these are the input for the new customers this is the table when where we're add, adding coefficients to new customers so this is these amounts plus uh, plus 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 these coefficients that we are adding to the amount of new customers and now we will be adding uh, this line to calculate direct costs links to the amount of only new customers that will be joining our project so now I'm pressing enter now let's extrapolate this formula to the bottom then to the right So we will be adding this total amount dun dun dun, to the total amount of new customers. So let's go, let's go up for a second. So these are the new customers. Let's add a new line here. this will be total amount of new customers that will be joining our project let's create let's create total for this tab table Now let's go back to our direct costs. So here we have the value of direct cost per one uh, new customer for totals. Now we can go up. Drag this cell here and this cost will be linked to the totals. So now we have two types of direct costs. One group of direct costs are linked to the amount of existing customers. We can switch them on and off, add global and local coefficients. Another group of direct costs, they may be linked to the, uh, only to the new customers that are joining our project in this and our that uh, specific month. And for example, we can switch on and off these or that types of uh, ex expenses and look at the cash flow statement, look at the simple discounted payback period, 
So for example, we can switch off these costs from calculations. We can see zeros, we can see zeros. Or for example, we can, what we can do, for example, we would like to exclude um, first three types of customers from calculations. We can go up, for example, we can uh, push here uh, off. In this simple action, we're excluding all the revenues and direct costs for these first three types of customers from calculations. We can go through the model. What we will read, we see zeros for the first three types of customers. We can see zeros for three uh, for the first three types of customers in direct costs. Then we can see zeros in direct cost links linked to the existing customers, the existing amount of customers. And we can see zeros in direct costs that are linked to the amount of only new customers. So what is valuable, what is vital, what is important? We can build uh, these scenarios very quickly. We can, by doing this, we can fill our business idea. We can see the strengths of our business project. We can see weaknesses, weak points. Of our business idea we can see how stable our business idea is we can see how much financing we need in this or that case for example if, if we are too optimistic with this or that type of customer we can switch off this customer and see uh, what will be the level of profits profitability payback period internal rate of return if we are not using this type of customer in our calculations so you by using all these uh, on off buttons by by using all these buttons by by using all these global and local coefficients you will see the difference between pessimistic scenario optimistic scenario how much financing is needed in bad scenario in good scenario so you will be able to uh, know a lot about your business idea uh, maybe you will have to rethink your business concept it's a good time to uh, do that. So that's why I decided to show you all this, uh, all this stuff in this tutorial uh, specifically. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, I will be uh, placing uh, the link to the playlist where I will be keeping all these tutorials at the end screen of this video as well. And um, um, when I finish this model completely, I will be putting all the links on the tutorials in the description of this video. So you will be able to find the whole process of creation of this model in the description of this video. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, you can always order financial models from scratch. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, see you guys in next videos. Thank you and bye.